In this tutorial we're going to do just a little bit of bonus content. Um, I'm going to show you how to control and how to animate the depth of field of your virtual camera in Blender. And uh, to start off with let's talk a little bit about what depth of field is. So I've prepared a little graphic here and I've got a demo photo. So depth of field is basically the slice of focus of your uh, camera. You may have noticed um, in a lot of photographs that the background is blurry and the subject is sharp. So I've got a photograph that I took of a spider in my garden down here. And this spider is very small. This was taken with a macro lens. You can see that the slice of focus on this image is very, very narrow. The eyes are sharp. The face is sharp. And certain hairs are sharp, but the back legs are very blurry, the forward legs are very blurry, and most of the flower, most of the details on the flower are also very blurry. So this photograph has a very narrow depth of field. In other words, a narrow slice of focus. And there are three things that affect that. They're listed up here. One is the proximity of the subject to the camera. The closer you get to your subject, the narrower that slice of focus gets. Or, in other words, um, the photograph has more blur in it. The focal length of the lens, uh, or in other words, the zoom, is also a factor. So the more you zoom in, or the higher your focal length number is, which is measured in millimeters, uh, the more blur you get in your photograph. And also, the aperture of the lens is kind of the big one that everybody always thinks of. So the larger the opening, or in other words, the lower the F number, um, the more blur you have in your photograph. So um, you can see from that, because focal length and proximity are factors that the scale of our scene will also play in. So by default, the default cube in Blender is 2 meters by 2 meters, and that's actually a really huge cube. So that's a lot bigger than most of the things that we would be photographing. So let's pretend that this cube is a really tall table or something. And actually, um, let's turn on our screencast keys. There we go. So if I look through my camera here and hit shift tilde so that I can zoom in and kind of play with our perspective here. Let's come in on this table and this is probably a more realistic perspective for a person to come on to a block, a block this size. Uh, so let's put a couple of items on top of our block. Um, let's just kind of make ourselves a little still life scene here. There we have a cone and we'll do a cylinder and just because I don't like end gons I'm gonna put a triangle fan in there not that it matters for this scene and let's move it around here and you can also see that by default our camera is pretty big so I'm going to change the viewport display of the camera to Instead of a one meter, like six foot long camera, we're going to change it to a little more of a realistic size. Okay, and one more object just to be thorough. We'll grab a UV sphere here, kind of place it halfway. Okay, so that's a good arrangement. We've got our objects are different depths compared to the camera so we should be able to focus on one of them while blurring the others so if I come down to my camera settings now you can see that our camera focal length is set to 50 millimeters let's go to a rendered view um, and it's as simple as checking this little box on our camera and saying we want to use or show depth of field and our focus object, uh, we can choose the cone, for instance. You can see that there's a little bit of blur on the cylinder and even less blur on the sphere. As we get closer to the cone, things get more in focus. And our f-stop, or in other words, the aperture of our lens over here is set to 2.8. That's a pretty low number, so that's a, a large opening, which makes for a lot of blur. If we put that number even lower, 
then we get even more blur. It becomes even more obvious. Um, we can focus on the cylinder. You can see that now the cone is our blurriest object. So that kind of works for fairly coarse control. We can choose our focus object or we can choose a focus distance. So about 1.1 meters away we're focused on the cylinder here and if we increase that a little bit we end up focused on the cone so we can go by object we can go by distance what I generally like to do and I'm gonna change my layout here what I generally like to do is I like to focus on an empty so I'm going to add an empty to our scene here and it's just gonna be plain axes and that's just fine it doesn't really matter um, and I usually just for my own purposes I just name this empty DOF or if I have multiple cameras I'll name it after the camera camera one DOF or DOF camera one then if I select my camera I can choose the depth of field object to be my DOF empty and the advantage of doing this is that I can focus on very precise locations so if I want to be focused on this back end or the front end of my cylinder then I can do that very easily let's just make that a little easier to see I'm going to change the display size of my plane axes there so that they're a little more visible alright and now this is how I would animate my depth of field so if I want to create what's called a rack focus uh, which is a technique often used in filmmaking where the camera shifts focus from one object to another in order to place emphasis on different objects what I would do is I would just animate the position of this empty so I'm gonna tap I and animate the location of the empty and then I'll go forward to frame 50 let's leave the focus on this spot on our cone for 50 frames so we'll animate will uh, keyframe that location again and then over the course of the next 40 frames I'm going to shift my focus forward to this uh, cylinder so we'll click our location keyframe actually let's just do location we'll animate our location keyframe right there okay so now if I'm looking through my camera you can see the focus stays the same and then it animates and moves so we change our focus and that's basically how I do it uh, it's a really simple technique you just need a couple of empties or if there's one camera you just really need one empty that you can place where you want the camera to be focused at all times and you animate its position very simple um, but also very precise and um, very easy to do so I hope this is helpful have a great day